Hello again, it's me, Milton, Little Milto Channel. Well, today is going to be the big teardown on this. Of course, you should have known by the title of it, the professional, sorry, the Bosch Professional GDX 18 volt EC. Right, so on we go. First job, get rid of that. The belt hook, we don't need that on it. You may be wondering why we're tearing it down. To have a look inside, actually. The reason why I'm tearing it down is, is so I can get in about the actual hammers. I bought some scales, we're going to weigh the hammers inside of it. What we on here? That should be enough. I'm just ripping this off. There we go. Get rid of that. We don't need that. Right. We would imagine it'll be a T10. So I shall go into the special box and get my little special T10. We'll use a slightly cheaper one for this one. I mean the same to one that's not as long. Oh, damn. There we go. We're not going into that one, are we? Actually, that didn't fit in there. Oh, it does. <sighs> right, we're in. Right. Torque settings down. Put three, should do it. Right. So I walked it, jack it off. Yeah. The idea is, I've had some practice tearing a impact down uh, for a bower and a works drill. So really it should be flushed with success and hopefully we can get it. And also we'll take the battery out as well. Oh, does it work? Are we going any further? Yeah. Oh, interesting thing about the trigger on this. Listen. Right. The trigger actually moves up and down and it actually increases and decreases the speed on it. Nobody's ever pointed that out, but then again, maybe it's just mine that does that. Right. Okay, in we go. Right, we'll start here. Right, we're going to have to go up a bit. Try four. Yeah, took it. Right. We will naturally assume that all these are the same size. And we'll turn it up one more. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, I'll just check that to make absolutely sure they are all the same size. My God! Well, they're pretty tight, haven't they? Come on! So, let's see. We've got to get the hammers. That's the main task. We're not so much bothered about the electrics, to be honest with you, because usually they're all covered up anyway and you can't usually see them. But then again, this is an old impact, so it might surprise us. Well, that must be very tight, that ain't. Well, that one I could see. Ah, uh -huh, here we go. Ah, so far they're all the same size. <laughs> I just noticed there's something else on this. <laughs> right, where we got this? We got the free bit, of course, the handle, the safety strap still on it. The actual bit that came with it is still actually attached to it. I told everybody, don't use it, only use it on the Japanese screws because they're a different size. Well, we've still got that. It's still there, on it? Never been used right. So, now, let's quick look and quick check on this. Now, I've got these here. Right, let's go. Hang on a minute. Guess what? It's not 10. Right, do I have to take these off to start with? And that cover seems to be attached to it. Same on this side as well. Ah, right. Looks like Bosch is trying to stop us from getting into it. Right, I'm going to have to hunt for a T9 now. I have to think on this one. Okay then, after hunting around, Went to the old engineering box, where the old tools are for things like fixing sockets and things like that, for fixing cars and bits of machinery and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Look what I found, right? And guess what? One T9. Okay, fine. We've cracked it. We've now got a T9. That was very, very, very lucky. I've been through all the boxes, through the wall, Bosch, Makita. No, no, Makita. Uh, Milwaukee, 
Right, trying to get bets to fit. Does it fit very good? Ah, this fits. Ah, oh, Jesus. What the heck? Okay. Let us rethink. Grab them with this. No, I'll rethink. Okay, me old welding grips. They'll do it. No, no, too tight. I'll do it. Right. We're in. Got ya. Wow, that is tight. That's it, it's loose now. Okay then. So we've got this one here. Right. Looks like Bosch does not want us to get into this. <laughs> Great. Uh, it's tight coming out though. Ah, got ya. Right, so we'll just leave this bit attached to it. We know where that is now. Right, okay then. Fine, 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 fine. We don't need this, I don't think. We've got everything apart. Yep. So, next job. Close the station door. Get the old nudgy thing right now the idea is let me up this way is you give a gentle tap with a hammer like this bang and if it's all good to go it should just come and part oh. and it's not so that means there's something else holding it okay then anything on the bottom no screws on the bottom nope seems to be coming apart there coming apart up the handle. I had this problem with the wax drill. Yeah, it was something around here and it looks like this is the same. Now, okay then, let's have a look at this and I've got a funny feeling I know what it is. I always wondered what this was for. This piece here is telling me something. I could never understand why Bosch put this on. It was always weird. I thought, why have they put this on here? I thought, is it for when you're using it, you scratch it or something? No. So, we're going to have to get into this somehow. And I reckon what it is, it's got something to do with this. Because it's actually coming apart up there. And this was a problem I had with the works drill. So, let me think. Yeah, let me think. Let me think. Can we get into this? Right, I'm going to have to have a bit of a play with this just now. <laughs> all off wait for this all off about four, four seconds right I thought right I'll get this a bit, bit harder to poke right what I did was I pushed hard with this device here right up in there and I plicked it up now instincts were telling me to go in this way but I thought it looks too hard to go in so let's see what happens if we get a bit more force comes off. Huh. Huh. Right, I'll we'll take that off. Try another gentle tap. Okay, back to the hammer. Mm. The little monkeys. They really don't want us to get into this, do they? Then the same thing, by the looks of it, it's what they've done with this. Show you. Right. Put a clip in like this to keep it together because look what's happened now that I've actually done this and separated it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually separating. You might see it better if you can see it this way. It's actually separating. They've got a clip in there, and guess what? I decided not to buy them bits. I was looking at a set with little hooks on them. You see, and I thought, ah, what do I need them for? I won't need them. So now I've got to get inside here. I'm not going to use this camera just yet because I don't need it. To get inside here to get this out. Ah! Oh! Oh, well, did you actually see that on camera? 
I'll just push it back in again. I'll show you sort of what I did. <laughs> well, I would have pushed it back in again. Crafty. Th nah. Well, go on. I'll have a quick shot. See if I can put it back in and get it back out again. Wow. Well, that's good. It's going to be fun getting it. Oh, there it is. Right, it's back in again. And it is that easy to take out, but you don't half hold it. What I did was, I put it in there like so, and I flicked it. See? Got it out. Right, I'll keep that safe as well. In fact, the bits I've been using, I'll put in there. The other bits I'm using, I'll put that in there as well. Right, so now that we've done this, it should, in theory, knock apart. Is there any other blinking screws holding this thing together before I go any further? I'll keep it on the table. No, there is no other screws holding this thing together. Right, it feels like it's got to come apart. Let's have a feel. Yeah, it's coming. That's it, it's gone. See? Just have to get a little gentle tap with the hammer. It's more or less apart. There we go, we've got it. We've won! Ha ha! We were not different. Whoa! There we go. Right. I thought we want a quick look inside now, eh? See what we've got. Well, to start with, this is what I'm interested in. Oh, sorry. This is what I'm interested in, this bit here. Well, I'm surprised at how big this is, actually, to be honest with you. More. Wow. Quite small, actually. And that looks like... That'll be shielded bearings, I suppose, on the end. Uh, looks like sealed, but, well, not supposed to be. Anyway, as you can see, actually, I was right on something. Because of its age, right, they've only put, covered up everything down here on this section down here. Well, I'll just turn that around so you can see it. Right. On this section here. The rest of it you can more or less see, but by the looks of it, you can't see any of the actual gubbins, like them Mosfats or whatever the hell they're called. I can never get the name right on them. So you have to take that there. And if, as we look round it, right, we've got something here. We might take, try and take the motor to bits once we've had this a bit. But once we take this to bits, this is what I'm really interested in. And the trigger on it, actually, is quite nice, actually. Look at that. Look at that. Well, I don't know why it wobbles, why it lets you actually more or less play two tone with it. Ah, yeah. I can see now why. The trigger itself is actually quite loose and it's housing. It's not a very good fit. It actually wobble wobbles about all over the place. The wobbly little damn thing. Whether or not the other clamshell holds it better, I don't know. Look at that. No, not really. And guess what? If you wanted to know what type of material this is made out of, pretty crap if you ask me. It ain't that bloody well strong, is it? Quite surprising, actually, quite weak. Can't see. I can only see them little arrows pointing to 4 and 13, the looks of it. Is that 13? Could be 13. Uh, got an arrow down, we've got 1066, 1143, we've got one underneath it. To be honest with you, if it's anything special, I don't know what it is. Don't really say nothing. Anyway, typical. Anyway, we're not interested in that. Right, we'll get rid of that. We don't need this, we'll put that there and we'll forget about it. Okay, next to come off with this has to be the light. That's a little bit obvious to me. Yeah, let's look at that. They must have had to go down a certain way. I tell you what, though, I have noticed they've actually crushed the cable just there for the lights, and they've also nipped it up there as well. Not too badly made. Woo. Right then, let's see how can we get that off. Let's have a quick look at this. Are we still on? Yeah, we are. Right. Uh -huh, that should flick up. Try this. <laughs> <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Oh. Right. Ah, right. Okay, I thought it might have took the wire away, but it didn't. It's left the bulb behind it, and it's not attached to anything. Right, okay, fine. That's that side done, and I must admit... 
Right, okay. Let's have a look at this side then. Uh oh. Oh. Of course, I forgot. Safety strap. Right. Let's have a look at this. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm going to have to get this out, am I? Right, let's see if we can get this mo this monstrosity out. Yeah, it's coming. Oh, there it is. Twists on it. No, nope. come on. Oh, hey, not bad. We're getting there. We're getting there. Right. No, yeah. My God, went to see the mess of this. Right, no, this should just come out. All right, I'll try this one again. I'm sorry you can't see this, but it really is pretty darn well awkward. Right, I'll try and do it this way. So you can maybe see what I'm doing. Uh. Oh, okay, fine, that's cool. Amazing. Right, put that in there as well. Okay then, we've got all this to bits. But what I have noticed, I might have complained about the wiring on this side being smashed up. You want to see the mess the wire is on this side. Before I reassemble this, I'm going to have to look at this and see just how the wiring should have went. I don't think when manufacturing, this is, it hasn't. When this has been manufactured, it's went in the wrong way. For somehow or other, they've built it actually wrong. It looks like they've had it actually crushed either. You can see this. They've either had it crushed somewhere in there or on the other side. Because I've just laid that in there just now. Because but then again, there is not a lot of movement inside there, I must admit. Right, now this is a bit we're really interested in, this bit here. Now, you've got to ask a question. Am I taking the anvil out of this? To be honest with you, and I've got to hold my hand up to this, trying to get these anvils apart, and especially on this one, because it's got a half inch drive on the end. I've had a quick look at it, and I believe you and me, I'll, talk, I'll take this off, the rubber thing here. There might be something underneath here that comes undone, right? Take that off, throw that in there. No, there isn't. But, this may be a screw thing on here. It looks like what you do is, you grab, hold here, and get a thin spanner and put it on there and take it off. Now, I used to fix, I used, yes, I used to fix bikes. But I don't think the thin spanners in there would be big enough to do it. I might have a look at it. Let's check, see if this is anything in here. Because it's all got gummed up with dirt. I mean, we have used this. You might think, oh, that looks pretty new. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. This was actually one of our main impacts for some time. Before we bought the Milwaukee Surge hydraulic drive. I'll cut out there. Oh, that's where the lights probably fit in Right then, anyway, enough of this. Let's try and get this figured out. Right, we've got to know, by the looks of it, these pins here on the sides, just here. One there, right, see that? One there, and there they are in there. Now, they either obviously push in, or they come out. It's one way or the other. So now, I'm gonna have a look at that myself, because you guys have seen it. I'll just show you that again, just in case it's too quick. You see the pins there and there? They're in there, right? Those, hold on a bit like that. Those now have to come out. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll switch to the other camera now and I'll show you that a bit closer up when I find this. Okay. Right. Oh, right, we're on now. First of all, before we have a look at that a bit, we'll have a quick look at this, right? Down here is your switching for your speeds and switching the light on and off, right? If we look very carefully up on here, everything you see is, is boxy sealed in there, I suppose you could say. This, I've no idea what it's for. Feels weird. And of course, you have your wires and everything all running up to your switch. You have your two main wires, main wires running behind here to the switch. Then you have the other wires running up to the motor up here, which go to the main part. And then you have this piece here at the back, if I can angle it and get it right your actual things that tell it to switch on and off your different polarities for your brushless motor right and if you look here this is for the lights here 
and the cables and everything that run over and if you can see now what I was on about I think this here ended up let's put, put this back in just now in the wrong place I think it was crushed either there or there and it should have been in there because that is really flattened down and it, anyway immaterial and of course here's your main sun you suppose you could take the drive we won't bother trying to turn the motor because it won't be in place. Right, let's go on now. Oh, switch. Nice little switch here. Yeah, and of course the left, your forward and reverse switch here. I'll leave that alone. I'll, I'll probably end up going flying on me. Uh, let's have a look inside there. No, we won't play with that. We'll just end up in trouble. Maybe it will be coming off. And I say, there's your quick look at the underneath side. Right, back to this now. Right. As we can see here, and of course we have the extra light on it and everything, I can see it now. What they've done is, they've shaped this down at an angle, right? So this tool's got to be no good for this. It looks like they have to go that way. Because they ain't going to push in any further, right? Blinking grease to all my hand now. Oh, God. Yeah. Right, and if we can maybe just in so see in there, we see the little things in there. Little planets turning round, good. Right, so now what we've got to do is gotta get something to go in there. Now it's gotta be the tricky bit. Alright. I think we'll switch now, we'll go back to the other camera, I think, for this one. Okay then, this is the bit we've all been waiting for. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll tell you what. Back to a little, no, I'll tell you what, I'll try this bit here, see if I can do it with this bit. Ah, it, it does. It's going to do it. Right, okay. The first look in, oh, sorry, there we go. Cool, okay. We've got this and this. Right. Mm, doesn't look like there's a bear inside there, or is there? Oh, yeah, there is. Wow. That's a weird looking bear. I've not seen one like that for part or have I ever seen one like that? I haven't. There we are. We've got into that. Now, obviously these things here, they put lots they've put lots and lots of little bits in it, so I suppose this doesn't really matter for this position, how it goes back. We can have a bit look at the things there, right? Let's get in with the proddy pokey thing. Thought that would do that. I was right. Okay, and here we have it. <laughs> I'm getting in there. Right, pop you back in there like so. Oh, oh we'll leave it out. To pot weight, don't want it. Oh, it's that stinky grease again. Ugh. Right. So I suppose now, nothing else has got to come apart. We'll just tip it up then, eh? There we go. And here we have it. And there we go. Can we see inside there? Hello. It looks a worn. Can't be wear. Can't be wear. Can't be wore. Right, wore, wear, wear. Ah, oh, wow. Right. Let's just have a closer look at this. We'll remove this away just now. We don't need this. We'll put it over here. Fact, we'll put that on top there just now. Right. Now, I've just noticed something. I may have to try getting this apart to check on something. Right, we'll put that like so, so you can sort of send me a look inside it while I'm playing about with it. Come on, play ball, stay. Now, I don't know whether this camera, I'm going to have a look at that just now. Through the camera lens, can we see this? Seems a bit far away. I'm going to cut right, we'll come closer, right? Now, cloth. Right, you. I've noticed something about this. Something really weird. Now, you got to bear with us just. Oh, God almighty. Right, can I get this off? Can I get rid of this? No, it's going to stay on. It's not coming off that way. Well, they got it on. Ah, oh, they probably got it on before. Right, I'm going to give this a quick wipe over. Can you notice something? Have a look at the hammers. This is the Hatchel hammer, the anvil's inside there. Look. That looks worn like hell, but it can't be. 
Alright, let's let's clean this up. I'll switch off just now. Okay then. Right. No, we want a pretty bulky thing. No. If we try and look at something, right, on this, I'll try to get the angle just right. I'll come in a bit, but there I would think should be about right. Hopefully we can get some light and some glistening on here. You gotta remember, I'm not looking through the camera lens, so I see things a bit different to what you're seeing through the camera. That is the normal direction that it would be hitting. This direction. Alright, yeah. And on this side here, right, because you've got to remember, I'm guy, I'm got to try leaning a bit like this, see, right. This side here, there is very little wear, because this is reverse, right. So that there is no way I could have wore this all directions. Yes, it could be worn on this side, if you look at it very carefully. Now, you've got to remember, I'm looking at this different, right. So here we have which looks like wear, but it can't be, because this has got it on it here, and this side's got it in that traverse, as we turn it round. Because we normally went forward, we, we very rarely went backwards and took screws back out with it. Huh? So again here, you look, and it's not sharp here, but it is very sharp on this edge here, and the same with the other side. So whatever this is meant to be, it's meant to be this way, which I'll tilt it back up again. So that the camera can pick it up and move it around. So in other words, what I'm saying is, Bosch have deliberately chamfered this edge on it for a reason. Now I've got to figure out why. And it's also on this piece here as well. I'm trying to get the light into it so you can see it. Now what I'm going to have to go, go now is go away and look at this footage to make sure I've, I'm actually show, get lost to, showing you this. And I may have to try and get the anvil out. And I'm going to have to figure this one out. Right. As I say, I'm going to have to go and look at the footage on this camera to see whether or not you guys have actually seen what I have actually seen. Hang on a second light in the wrong place right took that now back to this I'm going to have to look at the footage on this to make sure that you guys can see it and this is about as close as I can get with this one without it getting bloody right they've done this for a reason I'm going to have to work on this and one thing else I notice as well this is one hell of a strong spring I can't turn it Hurts me hand like hell. Right, I'll stop shouting. I'm now going to go away. I'm going to have a smoke. And I'm going to view this footage here. And I'm going to see what you guys have seen. As I said, just in case we haven't, I'll also bring this up here. Mind you, I might have to redo this again. I'll well tell you that I'm redoing it again. So hopefully you can see that inside there. Right, what that actually is. They've done the same in there. I've got a funny idea. I know why. Okay then, I had a quick look at the footage. Yeah, you can see what I'm getting at. Problem. Pardon me. Try again to that nut. That nut's about bigger than 24 millimeters. Right? The spanner I've got, which is 24, which is thin enough to do the job, won't fit. You could say, well, why not I just take a little slither off it? Simple, it's for fixing push bikes. It's my old push bike tools, right? From when I used to fix push bikes. And I'm not going to damage that because I might need it. So, we'll bet ghost. So then I came up with this fantastic idea. This is how clever I can be at times. I know what, why don't I put these back on again, like so, and then get an adjustable spanner, right? And put it to the right size. And turn it with that. Cool idea. Yeah, brilliant. Just one problem with that. Ah, yeah, of course I forgot. That's what the anvil's attached to. I need the locking thing for this and that inside here. Well, I'm defeated on that. We ain't getting this off. It's just plain simple as that. Because I haven't got a spanner and I'm not going to knock up 
my bike spanner and not only that some of them weren't cheap some of them were park tools and park tool stuff ain't cheap for, for bikes so let's face it it ain't getting done so basically speaking until such times as I could ever even find a 24 mil spanner that would fit it which is have we got some in the little thing here yeah this will do it and now just bear with us just now Oh, go on. Right. Which is actually, let's just check, check the size in millimeters. Come on, get on. Okay. Oh, actually, it's got one of these days, is it today? Yeah, it's got one of these days. Oh, wow. Cotton, that's 24.97. Uh, 24, it's almost a 25, it's almost 25 mil spanner. So if you know where you got a 25 mil spanner from, right, that's relatively cheap. I'm not buying a blinking more expensive thing just to take this off, right? Then we're okay, we're good to go, right? And if you want that in inches, which it does do, huh? Cool, I've got a clue what that is. I won't get in inches, I haven't got a clue. I work in millimetres, a lot easier for me. I don't know what 0 0.981.5. In other words, it's near enough an inch, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably what it's measured in. It's actually probably measured in an inch. Yeah, it's near enough an inch. So basically speaking, you look for an inch spanner. They're all in trolley. So I'll get rid of them now, we don't need them. Put them back in case they get damaged. Don't like damage them. Right, anyway, so we're up to here now. So the next job is is actually weighing the hammer. The problem with weighing the hammer is we need something to weigh alongside it so we can get a comparison. And I must admit, actually, I did think at first it was quite weighty, this hammer. Now that I've actually seen it off, it's bigger than I thought. Uh, I have to admit, but it's not as heavy as I thought. The weight, believe it or not, is in this. This is a heavy piece of thing. And it's all placky. It'll be some type of nylon stuff. There'll be a marking in there Some. Oh yeah, there is. What's this one here? Mm, nah. Bosh. Seem to mark the stuff up different from everybody else. Right then. Next job is, basically speaking, quick cleanup job here. Right. Then we'll take the, the wall up here apart and we'll see if we can measure weight measure, weigh the hammers up. Right, okay, let's get on with that job then. A bit quick clean up. Okay then. This is the DeWalt DCF886. Right, just to show you. Somebody took the American, I think it was the American version, or this, to bits and pieces. Right, and what you found was inside, it was all covered in Shmoo, like, oh, some protective layer, right? And you come to the British equivalent, right? It's completely and utterly different. In fact, actually, I tell you what, I am surprised. I don't know if you can see it. How dirty the damn thing is up round here. I mean, we didn't use this one that long, because this was the one that caused the problem with my sons. They just kept burying screws with it. A bit powerful. It's not slowing down. Anyway. anyway, let's see if we can get this bit out first. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, it's got a bit off camera job. Oh, no, it's coming. Right, there, there we go. Right. Oh, no. Right. Oh, God. It's got to be fun. Real quick look. Yeah, all the wiring's on this piece here. This piece, this piece here, I think, might have to come off. Right, this bare weighs just now. Right, we'll just. I had the done. Why do we keep putting it over there? Right, I'll just get around with this. This you don't actually have to see getting stripped apart anyway. Right. Actually, if I took the light thing off here quicker, it would have actually came apart. Now I've got this apart now. Now this bit here should just lift off. What I have found is, 
Similar again, little chamfer bit. Let's see. Ah, uh, that's clever stuff, isn't it? Right, we'll leave it like that. Okay then. We've got the ball bearings as well, wait. Didn't really want the bearings wait, but I've ended up with the bearings wait. Right then. So I'll just clean this up just now, right? And we'll have a close look at both of them, okay? Right, I've got them cleaned up. We'll now move to this camera and we'll have a look at them a bit closer because this camera does better on closer up, okay then? Okay then. Are we recording, are we? Yeah, we are. Fine. Oh, good to see the record light on. Right then, move that there. Now, Bosch. This is a Bosch one, right? This is a DeWalt one. Now, as you can see, we have a bit more meat here than on this one. But if we look underneath, turn it up like so, right? It may be, the fact is that this has slightly more meat on it, like so. But it's also thinner as well on there this is actually quite thick and this is actually got a bigger diameter on it than this one let's we'll see if we can put them together but the interesting fact was when i did this with them and joined them both together like so right we can spin this round without me moving it they're more or less just the same so in other words here where the hammers actually meet they're both basically the same diameter Although this one, obviously, right, oh, perfect, actually, you did just sit in there, perfect, right? You can actually see there is a slight difference. It has a bigger central fugal force. I hope I said that right. I was looking at complaints of people saying you said it wrong. Right, so there is a slight differences in this. So I've tried this through the camera so you can actually see it, right? And turn it up maybe better than it that way, see? Right, so okay then. So this is a bigger diameter than this one. But yet they both actually do feel, and I ain't being funny about this, looks like I might have been wrong on this. So the only way to do it is set up scales and weigh them. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, the Bosch up first. Now I know the bearing's on this and the bearing isn't on this one, right? Well I can't get the bearing off that and I can't get the bearing out of there to do it. So we'll put this on here. And this is in grams that weighs two two three point seven okay right take this off so again right wow that's unbelievable that that can't be right <laughs> and it is two Three, three, zero. So, the DeWalt, right, we'll just switch this off just now, right? We can't wear the anvils, unfortunately, because, or even just the housings on them, that ain't going to work, because the Bosch is so much heavy with that silly thing there on the end of it, right? So, fine, you see? So, that ain't going to happen. So, okay then. Right, I'm going to try giving you a better look for this angle here and just turn it a bit slowly. The left hand side is the Bosch, the right is obviously the DeWalt. Right, so I'll just turn them very nice and steadily so you can see. And don't give me that it was a bearing that caused the difference in weight. I ain't wearing that at all. Right, I'm just going to sit there like that. Right, so as we can see by looking at the angle here, Right, the DeWalt definitely has thicker material. It is also slightly wider in diameter. I will measure that, by the way. Right, and as you can see here, although it has slightly more meat coming up here, it is thinner, but it's still carrying gravity. But because this has more weight on the outside edge, its central fuel force as it's turning is definitely going to increase. And yet again. If we look on this, right, which is the Bosch, the DeWalt, sorry, yeah, it also has the chamfer in on here. And I'll bring this one up here for a closer look as well. It also has a slight chamfer on it as well, so it's obviously something there. And you can see this one, really, truly, I'm surprised how dirty it was. 
it's actually quite clean because that's where it normally hits and there's reverse on this side. We can just get the light onto that. Right, there's a light onto there. And you see how really it's still quite dull whereas on this side it is actually a bit shinier and it would be the same on this side here. Right. So, and I'll bring out now the old El Bosho now that it's cleaned up so we can have a closer look at that. Is that dirt? Yeah, it's a bit dirt. I haven't cleaned up very good. There, get off. Right. And again here, the actual chamfer in itself isn't as much. It's about the same, actually. Right. And you can see, right, it's got a bit more wear because we did use this one more. And there's very little wear on this side. They're a bit up there where it was reversing. But on this one, most of the wear is sort of semi all over. Turn it around just to prove that again here you can see the shininess on here. Well I can. I'll try and see if I can get it and make sure that you guys can actually see that. Because I'll look at it from a different angle. If I look at it from down there, you can see it now. I think I'm pointing at the right angle, right? And if you go to this side, just up there on that edge there. Right. So off to the other camera now. Now done that so i'll just get that little device out again and we shall oh fuck it off i'm sorry for swearing just being annoyed right now on this we'll put that back in millimeters right right zeroed right we'll do the bosch first right You gotta say, ah, we want to see it too. Well, tough luck. Okay. Right. Thirty-nine point seven four. No, it's thirty-nine point seven four. Thirty-nine point seven four. Thirty-nine point seven four. Um. Um. Right. Now. The wall, yeah, suddenly bigger. Come on, get in. There we are. Ah, it's not very bloody round either. Getting different readings. Yeah, right. Forty-four point fourteen. Forty-four point fourteen m m. Now. For the mathematically astute amongst you, right, I'll have to close this door here just now, right, if you could actually work out the weight, gravity and speed, one thing we didn't look at was speed. Now, I know the Bosch turns at 2,800, the DeWalt spins at, hmm, ah, 2,800, that's why I picked it, just to make sure on that. So they're both spinning at the same speed. So what's the difference? Just hang on a second. Got a door to shut. So now you know a bit, but not but not there, but not there, but not there. Right, now the one thing I didn't show you was inside the DeWalt, right? And I will have to do that of course, but I'll do that afterwards once we look at this. Now the DeWalt has no actual chamfering on the hammer like the Bosch, right, I will show you that, I'm not going to mess about here and uh, try and pull fast ones. So basically, right, it doesn't really matter so much about the hammers, because the hammers are just a bit that gets hit at the end of the day, right, but with resistance, it would make a difference with the chamfer, we'll leave the chamfer just now, we'll go back to the weights here, even although the weights, right, weren't a lot in the grams of difference, it will make a significant difference with the diameter, right? And the diameters, right, weren't a lot, but then again, your centrifugal force will. So it's quite obvious that it is making a difference. And this is why this thing claps out on, on actual wood, because of the tension and the resistance of the wood going in with the screw, you see? Now, because they haven't chamfered, like in here, the actual hammers on this one, 
this would also make a slight difference because it means it wouldn't slip the same. That's going to slip a lot more. In other words, Makitas have a double hit in them when they hit. What's to say other impacts aren't doing the same? And this double hit could actually be part of the key or the slippage. And this is why Bosch has actually done that with theirs. And it is a slightly steeper chamfer as well. It's a lot more, right, than what the DeWalt is. I mean, yeah, it is a lot more. So if you had two surfaces which are hitting each other with this, it means it's going to slip past a lot more. Reason for that is this is designed for metal, for removing bolts and screw bolts, if you like, right? Engineering screws, if you want, with the thread on them, which don't offer any resistance when they're going in. The only resistance you get is when it actually gets to where it's supposed to be stopped at. This I also did explain in that video as well. So in some ways, I'm proven right. And this is why I think the chamfer is more on this than on these. Whereas you're going to get a lot more slippage, which means you're maintaining speed, which means you're getting more bang, 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 bang as he's turning around either trying to tighten it or loosen it. Whereas these are not actually designed for that. These are designed for wood to keep the impact rate there. Why it has a chamfered surface on it to begin with, I don't know, but it's certainly not as much as what the Bosch is. And this could be part of the key how these impacts work. When I looked at the, which isn't here, the Bauer, the Bauer didn't, it was just flat surface. And this is what threw me off. I thought, oh, this must be like, no, it's not. But as I said, the Bosch does have that on there. So that means if it was trying to double hit, it ain't going to do it. It's just going to hit and move, hit and move. Whereas if you slow them down and put them under strain, they're going to be trying to hit and hit and hit. Whereas this is just going to hit, slide, hit, slide, hit, slide as it goes round. The strength in the springs, let me try that. Oh. Wow. I'll try it that way, right? Is better. Ow! Wow! And the Bosch. Yeah, the Bosch has definitely got a stronger spring in it as well. So, there's another difference the springs. The DeWalt has a softer spring, the Bosch has a much harder spring in it there as well. And you've got to remember, it's not a true measurement of the hammers as well, because you've also, as I said, you've got to take into consideration the fact that you've got these bits, but they all add to the weight of it anyway. So to pot weight, we can't dismantle them and just measure them, or sorry, weigh them. So, theory is, <laughs> what is the theory? The theory is on this one, right? The fact is, this is definitely producing more oomph than what this one really is. But in actual fact, they're both roughly about the same. I would say, this is why I said, when people ask me how much power is it in wood, I've always said it's about 55 to 60 newton meters of torque. Sorry, 155. Right. I'll start that one again. My mistake. Okay. 100. The, the wall is 160 newton meters of torque. This is rated at 180, the Bosch. But it doesn't. In wood, because of the actual resistance, it slows it. We having this slippage is also in the other part of the problem. If they didn't have this slippage idea, I think, on here, so they would slip past each other easier, it probably would deliver more power, you see? But it doesn't. It ends up producing the, more, the same in wood, which is 160 newton meters of torque. So there you have that one then. Let's see what else we can go on about. Now, if we look inside the DeWalt, right? Oh God, that light's on the camera. Right, I should about do it. with a pokey thing, right? You can see the anvil has actually no, it's just flat edged. Same as what the Abauer was, it's actually flat edged. So in other words, it hasn't got the same slippage resistance as well in it. So it means it's hitting a lot harder, right? Unlike the uh, Bosch, which has on this, I'll just see if I can get the Bosch in for a closer look on that one, just to see if you have actually seen it. I am going to clean it up, but it won't make any odds anyway. See if you can see it right. 
it's quite clear that it's actually shaped edge there so it means this is going to slip a lot more it's so it can keep the impact ray up when it's trying to release steel on steel but it fails in wood because it doesn't work it's got too much slippage and that's why this thing doesn't really perform so well in wood okay then back to the other camera no on, turn off. right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the grease I'm going to re-grease the DeWalt back up get rid of it we don't need it it just it's an input we don't use it anymore to be honest with you it's just an ornament that sits up there to be honest <laughs> uh, just for sure so I'm not going to bother doing anything away I'm not going to bother cleaning it up maybe if somebody wants to see a bit more of it stripped down in little bits and pieces and if you put in the comments below that you wouldn't mind seeing the whole thing in can sort of semi a bits and cleaned up or something I don't know because it does look a little bit different to usual I suppose we might have a look at that so fine but as for that we just got to clean up I'm going to clean the Bosch up as well get all the grease out of there and put fresh in here yeah, to be honest with you and we'll do that and hopefully the assembly will go according to plan but so first of all I'll get rid of that DeWalt right let's see this thing back together now right let's see if you're gonna work but, right yep there it goes that works now right so I'll go away I'll clean the bush up and then we'll, go, we'll get that assembled again then okay okay then just been round on my mates we all about one meeting about this and I showed them all the footage and everything and mistakes were made I lost some film footage of me taking the pins out for the hammer how that was done was I did it exactly how I said I was going to do it I pushed it in and I pulled them over and did the same with that side right the pins came out about quarter way then I grabbed these put it on the side and pulled it and turned it around and did the same again and pulled them out and then put them into this thing here okay because that footage isn't there again here this camera sometimes when you press the on button to get it to play or well, start recording it sometimes doesn't do it it's bad for that I've lost footage before on that one and that's what happened right now the anvil and the hammer yeah right I made a mistake I ended up calling it saying at one point of the video the anvil is actually a hammer my mistake it is there I did do it I really that is just a little mistake sorry about that left and right okay when I was over here and the camera was pointing down here this is my left and this is my right but as you're sitting looking at me now right when I then went back to the camera left and right is now reversed it was a mistake and I should have pointed that out to say that the um, the hammer of the Bosch was in this left hand here and then right hand here it was one of these mess ups because we know it was back to front it was in the left right right left. anyway you get the idea so fine I'll stop digging a hole for myself right and the bearing because the DeWalt actually had the bearing on the end of it that is going to add a few grams to it so what we decided to do was was for me to weigh one of these little screw bits here which came in at 4.9 so I suppose you could say take 4 grams off the actual weight which is on here so the Bosch came in at 232.7 grams the DeWalt came in at 233 grams. I'll just take three off to make things easy, right? And that puts it at 230. But if you take four off it, of course, it's going to be 429. So really, there isn't that much significance in that. But again here, the difference was in the fact is that DeWalt has a bigger circumference. That will make a difference, right? And it will make a difference, right? And... Uh, What's this again? What's this other one? Just a bare wheeze here. Right, sorry, I've got that now. Right, it's the slippage, right? Now, what we did was we went online and we know somebody that actually took a Makita to bits and pieces. And in this video, 
He cuts it open and he lets you see the hammer's actually working. Now, on the anvil on this Makita, right, the anvil didn't have any chamfering on it at all, but the hammer had a small bit of chamfer on it, a bit smaller than even what the DeWalt was. And what he did was, in the high-speed footage, you seen it bounce twice at full speed. At low speed it didn't, it just hit and moved on, right, which this definitely does. So, because of the slippage, and this has chamfering on the anvil and the hammer, what we looked at was, where's it hitting the second time round when it double hits? It's more or less hitting right at the top end of it. So, the Makita has a double hit. This doesn't. This, because of the slippage, because of the way it's shaped, will just slide straight past. So, that actually is correct. All right, so I've done that. And as for the rebuild, I'm now going to wait to get changed now, right, in my normal clothes, right, for doing this. Because I said, I'm just back in, and I'll go on about the mistake on the rebuild, okay? Right, so what went wrong on the rebuild? In actual fact, if you remember, early on, which way I'm going to turn this, turn it this way around, I think, yeah, be easier. Right, need this. I mentioned about the wires inside how they were all crushed especially on this side now what happened was uh basically i had to take the screws out five times but only three times when i had all the screws in something was going wrong it wasn't sitting right and i knew there was something wrong and it didn't sound right it's okay now it's working okay right there so what it was this is what i do with manufacturing this just along from here, inside here, about there, there is a wire run. And at the end of it, it has like a little uh, cutout bit in the plastic. It's cut out bit, it's molding really. And the wires go to there. What they'd done is, they brought the wires in too early. So basically speaking, they were running up on here. Now I didn't quite notice that, because when I took it to bits, the wires weren't in the right place. The reason why the wires weren't in the right place is when you're manufacturing something you've got to make it easy for the people building it. Somebody has to put this together. Now you can say well a robot could do it but getting the wires right if it was done by robots it wasn't because the wires were in wrong and it took me a while to realise this. As I said by the time I'd gotten round to the fifth time we were removing some of the screws up saying this still isn't quite right. I suddenly realised what the problem was and it wasn't like that when I took it to bits because I went back and had a look at the footage. Remember, if you're taking something to bits, when you get it open, take a photograph off it because if you don't, you might have problems putting it back together. Well, it wasn't in there, it was in wrong. So, when I eventually put the wires in correctly how they should be and fed them up through, it went together. But believe you me, the wires still aren't sitting right 100% in there, but they're better than what they were when I first bought it. I would imagine, this being first generation, the next generation of these ones that came out, they maybe sorted it out in the moulding. So anyway, that's that. It took me ages to get this thing done. In fact, it took me a bit longer than what the Abauer did to actually put together. Because I had to stop, go away, have a break for it, come back to it. You know the one where things just ain't going right? So really, we are now into the third day now on this, right? So, I've got the clip here to put into place, right? So we'll get this shoved in. We'll stop going on about things. Ah, eh, come on. And you get clip. Alright, put the clip in. The clip is in. And this thing here should just fit into there nicely and push in which oh no my fault it's not quite right there there we go it pushes into place and like so just like that move the rubber a bit there and there it is that's that into place we've got that bit done we've just got this bit here to put on there we go oh right so do, do all the speeds work well first second and it it works so I prove I'll just pop it back out of this one we'll stick this in here and it should go bangity bang 
once we get tired. Now remember, I'm not doing this at full speed. I'm only doing this on low just to let you hear that it is actually back functioning again. Okay, right? So we don't damage anything. Right, so that works, good. So, next on the list. Really and truly, what's happened here is, is what I actually said, right? The guys in woodworking jumped in thinking they were buying something that had 180 newton meters of torque. It's not. It basically, in wood, it comes down to 160. The wooden guys got it wrong. And of course, because they jumped in, everybody thought this was for wood. AK, so did I. Because all the woodworking, the wooden head guys, if you like, actually were all saying, oh, look at this, you see, and all this. But in actual fact, what would it suit? I said mechanic, yeah? For a little mechanic, I'm sorry, a little, um, oh, not mechanic. For a mechanic, this is ideal for, basically speaking, medium jobs, right? Getting under the bonnet and everything. It's a bit big, admittedly, but it would suit a mechanic, right? The, an engineer, it's not really big enough. As for putting in a 24 mil bolt, no, even with fine thread, it really and truly, it's a little bit underpowered for that. Even though, in steel, it definitely produces 180 newton meters of torque. So it's really better for somebody in a garage, for a small, lightweight, easy tool to get in and out. But really and truly, it's a bit underpowered by today's standard for what's out there anyway. Woodworking? Yeah. In other words, what you've got here is, you've got a jack of all trades and really and truly a master of none. So, there you have it. Is it that good? Please you blink and sell. It did, that's all right. And I've got plenty of videos of this thing actually doing jobs, which I was surprised at what it did. So anyway, my name's Milton, the channel's called Little Milto. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I bet you this is another one of my epic long videos again. And next time, uh, oh yeah, wait a minute. Not for ah, I got about something. Right, this. Flushed with success on tearing the living daylights basically out of the hammers on this, not the electronics, that's for somebody else to do. We're going to try and have a look at the hammers on this one here, right? This is a Hitachi triple action. Really and truly, it was bought just in case this thing was totally not a dead duck. I did watch uh, Oz Talk when they reviewed this and quite a few other impacts, right? And what I found was, this thing was just perfect. It was totally not a light underpowered. It's okay, I've got a bit of rubber here. It's not quite jumped into place, right? Ah, okay. Anyway, so I decided that will be perfect for us. Look, it's underpowered. It'll do. I'm not disappointed in it. I couldn't care less. It does what it does. But I bought this just in case it didn't match up. We only used it twice, right? And I must admit, it's a nice impact. Right, maybe it should be on a set of Star Wars or something with like fancy little lights and gimmicks on it. But, we're going to have a look at the triple action on this. I don't think anybody has, so it's about time somebody did. So I am. So anyway, bye now. Subscribe if you want. Thumbs up, thumbs down. So now you know what I'll be doing in the future. And plus, videos on all this stuff here. Right, on what's hot and what's not. Okay then, bye now.